Greetings and welcome to Legacies of Wavering, Lore of the Endowment. This will be chapter 20 of this reading. I quickly regained consciousness back on Earth, having no idea of how that happened as I looked up to see Shadow had just created his true form. He used Dark Vanish to teleport over to Salus' right side and smack him with two of his tails, tossing my brother half a mile away from my left. I calmly picked myself up, having somehow regained all of my strength and energy, and stood up straight. I brushed off the dirt from my clothes, then looked up at Shadow as he started his mindless rampage through the city. Though I had Shadow's soul, he still had the ability to fight through his physical body. That really pissed me off. After watching Shadow for about 5 seconds, I heard a woman's voice from behind me bark, Son of a bitch! I turned around to see Kalita had somehow slammed into a pile of construction bricks and had just stood up to shake herself off, as if it was nothing new. She then said to herself, didn't think that one through. She then walked over to me and said, if you've noticed, you've regained your strength and energy. She stopped and sat down just two feet away from me as she looked up at me and continued, the powers within the god realm rejuvenate the body and soul. Even though only your soul was there, it still rejuvenated your body in the mortal realm by transferring it through your spirit for when you came back. That, I thought, freaky, but cool. Strangely, Kalita didn't say anything about that. Maybe she just didn't want to acknowledge it. A loud explosion came from behind me where Shadow was, along with several loud screams of terror and agony quickly turned to see that Shadow had his back turned to me and his nine tails had just moved down from being curled over it, with black strips of lightning striking around each of his tails. I flew up about 50 feet to get an overview of what happened, finding he had just blown away about one-eighth of the city into dust. The civilians that survived the explosion were staggering away, running for their lives. I looked over at Shadow irritated and asked, Having fun, Alanu. Shadow quickly looked over his right side at me and said, No mortal dare speak my name without its title, especially when they have no power over me. Funny, I'm pretty sure I did. He turned towards me and snickered and said, You're bluffing. I gave a smirk and said, Try me. With that, I used my dark powers to change myself into Shattuck, then spoke in my two-toned voice and said, You see, Shadow, as you may know, I have the powers of darkness that you gave me. However, from what I've gathered, I am the only one that can use all of your powers within the mortal realm. Shadow snickered at me again, then asked, And what of it? I changed my expression into a blank stare as I replied, Therefore, I have the upper hand here, since I can predict your moves and counter them with my own. Pretending to be surprised, Shadow said, Oh, very good. The little boy did his homework. However, you missed one small detail. No matter what, I will always be faster and stronger than you, Shattuck. Because, in law with being a god, Size matters for all of our attributes. And as a god, I am far more superior than you. Hmm. Okay, I said, acting as if what he said was nothing important. I then raised my right hand up to my heart with my palm facing my body and said, But you too just missed a small detail. I concentrated my energy into my hand to rip away Shadow's soul from my body, while I continued, As I'm sure you already know, Shadow, you and Light are pretty much one and the same, just as twin siblings should be. Therefore, the small sphere that contained Shadow's soul started to slowly rip away from my own as it began pulling out of my body, while I continued, The powers of darkness and Illum are one, and the same as well. But as the story goes, Illum will always. Then completely ripped away the sphere from me 
grabbing it and held it tight in my right hand as I yelled, shine through the darkness. I quickly pulled my right arm away and held my hand straight out from my side as I held the sphere, which changed my body once again into a new form. The new form was similar to that of my darkness, and my hair and fur turned bright white and shined slightly. My eyes also turned neon white, with the pupils pitch black, but the blood red ring was still around the pupils, teeth reverting back to their normal white form. As to the change into my new form, all of my darkness powers were removed from my grasp. However, my strength, speed, and power were increased by three times from what they were in my darkness form. I also no longer had the urge to fight or be wild. My mind and soul were completely calm and pure, but I still felt the need to scratch. In a two-toned voice of Light's voice and mine, I said, There you have it, Alanu. I then slowly lowered my right hand down and said, As long as you stand before me, I, my Zek, shall always bring forth the Illum to shine through your darkness. Shadow just stared at me, terrified, while he said, What? No. Impossible. No mortal since the fall of Callius Shiro has ever been able to figure out how to use my sister's powers before. He then quickly lashed out one of his tails at me as he yelled, you lie! Just before his tail could strike me, the translucent white wall flashed to block the strike. The wall was three and a half feet tall and three feet wide, while also being three inches thick. It vanished as quickly as it appeared, but continued to hold back Shadow's tail. I impossible, he said. You can use Bright Shine! Bright Shine was Light's move and was only defensive used to protect its user from any type of attack, no matter what it was. It could work either by command or on its own, if the user can protect itself. No matter how fast an attack moved or how big it was, Bright Shine would block it. However, it could only protect up to as many attacks at one time compared to the amount of tails one had, because each wall bred up took away one tail from the form. Yet once the wall vanished, after a small period of time, the tail it used would grow back. As Shadow pulled his tail away, I held my right hand out towards him while releasing my grasp on his soul. Though I released it, his soul hovered just an inch over my hand as I said, Just to let you know, Shadow, I still have your spirit. The only thing left that binds you to this realm and allows you to roam freely. However, like all from Wavering, I can't simply kill you just by destroying that which keeps you, how do you say, mortal. Shadow became very angry as he growled at me and said, Better watch what you say, Kexon, or I'll, you'll what, feline, destroy me. I tossed his soul to let it fuse with his body, giving him full control to himself and his powers. Yet I wasn't about to let him go free. I wanted him to be complete, to show him that no one beats me, even at full power. I was going to take control of darkness again, but do so the right way, taking on Alanu himself. I lowered my right arm and said, You no longer have any power over me now, Shadow. There's nothing you can do to stop me. I'm going to obliterate that true body of yours and take back your spirit leaving you with nothing left to gain from any other mortal in this realm. As long as I have your soul, Shadow, you can never return back to what you once were. Never again to terrorize the ways of life within the mortal realm. I will strip you of your title, King of Darkness. No, he yelled. I won't let you. I won't. He then tried to strike me with all nine of his tails at once, but each were blocked by bright shine. I just smiled at that as I chuckled for a bit, knowing that whatever Shadow did was never going to harm me in any way. However, as he continued to try and push through, he shouted, I'll blow you away! Shadow quickly turned his head down to the ground at his right side and charged a powerful amount of dark energy into his mouth. 
After a second, he whipped his head to face me while reverting his tails back as he kept them aimed up at me and yelled, DESOLATE FLAMES! A continuous surge of energy was shot out from Shadow's mouth towards me. The blast quickly grew to be no bigger than the side of his own body, acting like a flame that had several dark bolts of lightning streaking around it wildly. Before it reached me, all nine of my tails grew back, then one disappeared to block the blast just half a foot away from me. As he continued to siphon his own energy into the attack, Shadow would start to slowly show signs that his body was weakening. One being that after three seconds of holding the surge of energy, his right front paw gave out and he fell onto his arm. While I stood there, unscathed from Shadow's idiotic actions, I gave a big sigh and calmly said, Pathetic. You'll only end up making this easier on me at this rate. His left paw then gave away and slammed him onto the other arm, while I continued, You'll only drain yourself of your own energy that much quicker, making it no challenge for me to obliterate you. Another five seconds passed, and both of Shadow's back legs collapsed. He was just barely able to hold himself from being pushed back by digging his claws into the ground. When that happened, Salus called out to me and jolted towards me with his right fist pulled back. I turned just to see him swing his fist at me, but it was blocked just five inches away from my face by one of my tails. As he continued to push forward, he yelled, Brother, stop! Let him go! Let Shadow destroy all of that which is left of these worthless quellants. I just stared at Salus with a blank expression, yet I felt slightly depressed at what he had just said. I stood silent because I couldn't believe that Salus, my little brother, would go to such lengths. There was nothing I could say or do to change him at that point. It really was over. I had no choice. Shadow finally gave up trying to destroy me with his technique, as his entire body collapsed under its own weight. Salus pulled his fist back as he stared at me with a smile on his face, yet he was crying. I calmly asked, is that it then? Is that all you wanted to say to me? Your final word in? Salus laughed, then asked, what are you talking about, bro? You're no brother of mine. Not with that attitude. Not with the way you think. Just as I said that, Salus went from being happy to being very saddened and surprised. In response to me, he asked, How can you say that, bro? Don't you hate these Quellins too? I gave a light irritated moan, then said, Not enough to kill them just for losing one of my brothers. Salus looked down at the ground, upset, crying a little more to what I had said. Then he began to grow angry. He quickly pulled his right fist back and lunged towards me as he looked directly into my eyes and yelled, THEN YOU'LL DIE WITH THEM! I allowed him to strike my left cheek, knowing that in my state he could never harm me. His attack was only able to nudge my head slightly to my right. Afterwards, he pulled his left fist back and yelled, FIGHT ME! He then swung at me with his left fist as he pulled his right fist away, but his left was blocked by bright shine as he shouted, FIGHT ME YOU COWARD! I squinted my eyes and calmly asked, A coward am I? I clenched my fist as Salus quickly stepped away, pulling his right fist back for another strike. He lunged for me again, but I halted his fist and grabbed it with my left hand. I then slowly clenched down just enough to have my fingers break his bones. Salus tried to get away, but I used his fist to pull him towards me struck him as hard as I could with my right fist into his stomach, paralyzing him slightly. He then struggled to just look up at me as I pulled my right fist back again, which I used to strike his face to knock him out. I just held him up by his right wrist with my left hand and said, I'll give you one last chance to live. Don't make the same mistake twice. I then pulled Salus closer to me a bit to toss him from my side. While I said, Be gone, peasant. I turned back towards Shadow, who started to laugh, then said, 
You haven't won yet, mortal. He coughed up some metallic black blood, having siphoned far too much of his own energy and damaging himself internally. Then he continued, Seeing as I have no choice but to give in to your will, I give you and this whole planet my final farewell. He coughed up some more of his blood as large black strands of lightning started to move across his body, while all nine of his tails raised themselves slightly to have the tips aimed straight up. Then with his last breath, he said, Here's my gift from me to you, endowment. No! Kalita yelled. She then quickly turned to me and yelled, His body is rechanneling his energy for a massive burst. You have to destroy him now, Ray. Otherwise, this whole planet is going to explode. I just calmly faced Shadow's body as I thought, Idiot. Does he really believe he can still defeat me? I placed my right hand out towards Shadow's body and called to take his spirit back. His soul, weakened from battle, jolted back and fused into me once more through my hand to move into my own. Once done, I charged my light energy for one of light's greatest techniques, illuminating sea. It was equal to that of Shadow's desolate flames, but far more powerful. However, once I had it charged, Salus regained consciousness and flew up to stand directly in my way. I'll give you one last chance, Zayek, he yelled. All you have to do is get Serena and our friends out of here. Please just let it go. I just ignored him and quickly jolted around to get a clear shot at Shadow. Then I said, it's over. When I motioned to release my blast from my hand, I yelled, be gone. Just before my blast could reach, Salus did something I had never seen him do before. He teleported. He intercepted the blast and was blown away into nothing, leaving Shadow completely unharmed. When I saw Salus use his teleportation technique, for the first time, just to prolong Shadow's destruction, I lost all concentration and stared down at the fox's body in shock. While I stared down at him, I said, he, he stopped it. He stopped it just to destroy this planet. I then began to float down to the ground, lowering my right arm as I asked, what was there to gain? What's there to hope for now? Just as I touched the ground, I fell to my knees as Kalita yelled, Come on, Ray, get up! She then ran over to me and jumped up to grab my right fox ear with her teeth, which she used to pull me down, as she said, Quit zoning out and destroy Shadow's body. You're the only one here who can. A high-pitched noise came from Shadow's body, with his dark aura beginning to spike up and flare off of him. Kalita released my ear and said, Ray, you have to destroy him now. She then raised her voice and yelled, End this now. As I stared at the fox's body in terror, I saw one of his tails vanish into thin air. Then Kalita yelled, Do you really want everyone you know to die just because you killed your own damn brother? That's not why, I said frightened. Then why not? I... I can't. What? I leaned forward to brace myself up on my hands while I looked down at the ground as I started to cry and said, I can't. I can't destroy him. I used up most of my energy to create that one blast. I then let my head hang down as I continued, There's nothing I can do now. I... I... Another one of Shadow's tails vanished. Then shortly after that, the ground went to shake slightly. It was as if they were part of a countdown. At the same time, Vincent finally regained consciousness and jolted over to us, where he asked, What's going on? Where's Salus? What happened? Kalita just stared at me with a depressed expression and said, Sorry, my lord. I didn't think that your brother would interfere. She then moved her eyes to gaze at the ground near me and said, I guess we lost. I'm not, 
I said in anger, bracing myself up onto my feet as I looked back over at Shadow. I'm not going to lose. I refuse to lose. I may not be able to teleport, but I can at least drag his body far enough away from here. I jolted over to the fox to see that it only had four tails left and said, Sorry, Serena. I hope you can save them when I'm gone. Just then, another tail vanished from Shadow and the ground shook even harder. I leaned down to reach for Shadow's left arm, but someone quickly struck the left side of my head and knocked me out. Yet I was able to understand one last thing before going unconscious. As I fell to my knees, the person who struck me grabbed the back of my coat's collar and pulled me up to quietly speak into my left fox ear, where they said, Take care, my lord. Tell Wolfie I love her. I'm sorry. While I was out, Light's voice spoke to me again in my head and said, Thank you, my lord. Now that Shadow can no longer bring his reign of evil upon this land, I am no longer of service to you or anyone else. I shall lay my body to rest and give you my soul to fully harness the powers of a loom within you. Take care now. I woke up to find myself out of my Lysic form, with the right side of my face to the ground as I laid on my stomach and saw that the fox body was nowhere to be found. Even when I stood up to look around, there wasn't a trace of the fox anywhere, but I guess that would be a good thing to know. Once I looked around, Kalita and Vincent called out to me. When I walked over to them, they pointed up at the sky to show me something. Something that was very amazing. The storm clouds above were gone, and a large patch of black smoke was in the air, which only looked to be the size of my fist hovering in the sky. I stood at Kalita's right side as I watched the spectacle and asked, What's that? It's... change, my lord. Staring at the light show, Vincent said, when Shadow was teleported away from Earth, the clouds parted and revealed the sky of Earth. Not long after that, the explosion happened. Explosion? I asked. I stood at Kalito's right side as I watched the spectacle and asked, What's that? It's... change, my lord. Staring at the light show, Vincent said, When Shadow was teleported away from Earth, the clouds parted and revealed the sky of Earth. Not long after that, the explosion happened. Explosion? I asked. As we all stared up at the spectacle, we heard a loud bang. Shortly after that, a powerful shockwave hit Earth and nearly slammed everyone onto the ground. It also caused the humans around us to gasp and start gossiping amongst themselves. I stood myself back up from the shockwave then looked over to my left at Vincent and asked, Where did that explosion come from? Dunno, he replied, finally looking over at me. But from what I can see, it looks to be out of the solar system and it didn't hit any stars. I then turned to Kalita and asked, How long was I out? She looked over, confused, and said, I didn't even know you were out. So you didn't do this? When I shook my head, Kalita sighed and glanced down at the ground, saddened as her ears bent down. After a second, she said, Then, she did do it. Just as I had predicted. Who? Kalita raised her head to look up at me and said, Please don't tell Wolf, my lord. It'll only break her heart. I looked at the canine, confused for a moment, then I realized who she was talking about. With that, I turned to look back up at the spectacle to watch it start to slowly fade away. There, I noticed a dark sphere in the sky. It was in the same visual area of the explosion and was the size of Earth's moon from where it stood. For some reason, to me, it looked as if it was slowly coming closer but I wasn't quite sure at the time. I looked at it, not sure as to what it was, 
then realized a minute later. Somehow, it was my home world, Bodor. For my brother, this is for you. I'm sorry for what happened. Though we had our tough times, we will always be together, no matter how far apart we push each other. I'm sorry, Salus Hayek Shiro, my little brother. May your soul be forever peaceful in the realm of the loom. Goodbye. This concludes the reading of chapter 20. Thank you all for watching and listening. If you like what you've seen and heard, there will be a link to my physical works in the description below. With that being said, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you again next week reading chapter 21.